This is Daniel, your Game Master and Master of Ceremony. This is Tori, and I play Dooley. This is Sorcerer, and I play Ty. This is Becca, and I play Mirgrat. And this is Odyssey, a Babylon 5 story. Welcome aboard. Another form, another form. Uh, we did. Look at this. Look at this thing. Can you imagine how the Earthers must utilize all these forms? Uh, remember the good days of Centauri Prime, yes? When the good handshake and the good drink and maybe a little bit of poison solved all our problems. <sighs> ah, them was the days, as the Earthers say. Speaking of the Earthers, come, 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 come. Why don't you sit and rest yourself here? I am in the middle of doing uh, paperwork. What is it with you Earthers and this paperwork you do all the time? I don't understand that at all. Anyway, I have this new contact that informs me there is this interested party in one of your major producers of cinematographic experiences. It's this amazing place. They call it an area of wonder and magic and majesty. I believe they call it Bollywood. Why they want my work, I'll never know. There's not that much dancing. But <laughs> work is work, and I'm willing to do what I can. But I know why you're here. You're here about the Dalmarie Celestia, though. Those days are numbered, at least in this story. So sit down, relax, have a drink. Not on the paperwork, please, for the love of the great maker. Not on the paperwork. I don't want to do it 37,000 times. <sighs> when last we left our intrepid adventurers, they were making a deal with the Association Former Shadow Agents in concern for the interior area of the former Mark Cab's place where this all started. And they had to come to certain terms as Miograt, with their forces, was going to merge with their forces to come together so that all could benefit from this arrangement. But this arrangement is not without problems and cost. Whether that be, you know, to the censor or whatever, but they look at you for a minute, they nod their heads, they... They hold up their finger for a moment, close their eyes for a second, and they kind of tap their they tap their finger right underneath their nose. It's kind of hmm. and there's a blink for a second. It says, "Very well, we will allow you to bring in, say, they look around the room for space, say five researchers as well as yourself to go through this. Everything you discover and research must be done." in a way that both you have a copy and we have a copy. Uh, any artifacts are still under our domain unless otherwise bargained for later. And uh, we will have at least two researchers here to absorb as much information as it's, de as it's decrypted as possible. I believe we can allow that. Yeah, they rolled a 25, you rolled a one. They kind of have you over a little under over a barrel, but um, I mean, say, that's that's often the way when you're trying to be a visiting researcher. <laughs> exactly. Though, and since I can't think of anything offhand, I just go, and they say, but I think this is advisable, though I would ask that, I think basically comes out as, though I would ask, since we, you have asked us for a favor, that we, you know, as well as everything else, since you now have access to all this information that you completely forgot was there, and it's artifacts on artifacts of artifacts, is it, well, if in the future we have a small request, we would ask for your advocation at that time. I believe that would have to depend on the nature of the request. Let's just say something small. Nothing dangerous, nothing hazardous, but small. I believe that would have to depend on the nature of the request. <laughs> As a student of cultural relativity, 
I would like to emphasize the fact that what you may view as small may in fact be monumental, monumental for someone operating outside of your social group. Therefore, it is important to keep in mind that the cultural context of your favor has bearing on whether or not it's perceived as small. Understood. He, he, that, that, I am therefore hesitant to, to agree to something that I cannot be sure will be small in my respect. However, if you would like to give me some additional time to study you and your associates so that I can make sure that we are operating on the same level of cultural values, I would be happy to then agree to your small favor. I sit back for a second. We will have somebody here who will educate you in, in some of our directives at that time. Is that satisfactory to you? Otherwise, we'll just have to catalog everything ourselves and figure out where this goes and hopefully be able to pack it up before the ship explodes and takes everyone with it. You know, oh well, off it goes. You win some, you lose some. By the way, they just said, to use a, a variation of a term, they just hold up essentially a uh, mint condition X-Men number one from 1963 and said, well... I guess if we have to eat it, we'll eat it. Oh well. Are they trying to give? Are are they trying to use eating something as a threat against a pakmara? Because no. <laughs> I I assure you, Dan, Mirgarat can double the fuck down on that. <laughs> I was using the metaphor, the metaphor of them saying, "Well, if this doesn't get cataloged, and we have to escape the vessel, and the vessel blows up, and all of it's lost again, well." I guess that's just, you know, 4,000 years of antiques, antiquities, and information that just is <sighs> lost to the centuries. But we're an organization. We'll find it again eventually. And that that's the, to use the Pakmara of the, well, this stuff may not make its way into the churn. It may get lost forever. And thus, that section of knowledge the great creator is trying to reabsorb just may be deleted. So, eh, he's not going to miss this vast array of knowledge from ancient times, is he? No, no, that's, it's, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Hmm. Sorry. Okay. So just to be clear, they're threatening that, that all of this might be destroyed if I don't agree to their bargain. Well, no, what they're, what they're saying is that if you don't agree to their bargain, then you and the other researchers won't be, uh, won't be let in. They'll take care of it themselves. But if they're not, fast enough or they can't expedite this fast enough well i guess that's on them oh well basically a way of saying you won't get yours and all this information may be lost which in a pakmara society is a giant oh my god wait what that's ah right. so they're playing the we can both lose card exactly okay um i think mirgarat's response to that is going to be uh, if this was if this was a vampire game. I actually no, I can't do. Make a will save. Okay. They basically have said, well, I guess we'll just wait here until uh, uh, Caesar burns down the, the library of uh, Alexandria. But I got tea. I can wait. Seven. Uh, seven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not rolling great today, Dan. <laughs> I wow. knew that. So in this. This particular case, again, it's like, you know, well, this Library of Alexandria is really nice. I guess you can read what you like, but, you know, it's going to get burned down in about 20 minutes. So would you like a cup of tea? Uh, <laughs> and you're like, oh, I thought, yeah. oh. this is, you know, this is absolute hell, absolute hell to say no, because here is all this information ancient artifacts, things of both occult natures, things of a variety of, of, of groups. You just ch asked for the stuff that was knowledge, Pakmara. That's what you saw here. If you had rolled any other culture, you would have seen stuff from everything. Okay. Right. Yeah, all right. So Mirgarat is going to look extremely uncomfortable, and then uh, they are going to say... Believe I understand your position. Then we have an accord. If I am allowed to make one caveat, I believe we can be in accord. Go ahead. I reserve 
have the right to not perform any favor that will compromise the Pockmoras ability. Granted, not a problem. Our deal is struck then. So, yes, I will, we will, anything that we ask. Yeah, Dooley looks compromise. extremely uneasy at that whole thing. I'm going to be pissed when she finds out that Mirgrat went ahead and made a deal with the fucking shadow people without her. <laughs> Hey, any of you? Okay, uh, I'm just gonna say, Julie, you could have jumped in and 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 tried to argue my case for for me. I'm not the only one with a diplomacy stat. Mm -hmm. Yes, but you're you, it, it, she's still stuck on the you're negotiating with the shadow people. Yeah, they have something we want. You want? Uh, we want like. They have information. They have potential information about the Yithians that we can use to help refine our Bugs Bunny test, so that it will be more accurate, and we are more likely to be able to not have accidental Yithians in our midst. I, I feel like that's a that's a thing that the entire team should be able to appreciate. Well, I, I okay, just to let you know what I think Dooley's thinking at this point would be, and that is if we have to deal with so many unsavory people, she's leaning towards just vaguely the evil of, do we really need all these people on the ship if we have to deal with these people? But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what Ty tried to say. Sorry, what'd you say, Ty? It is kind of what Ty tried to say at the beginning of all this. <laughs> As the thought balloon above Julie, Julie just for a moment said, you get from orbit, only way to be sure. It, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways. So, okay. So yes, Julie, under all this, you're still even shocked. You know what, Julie? I'll actually give you, before the hand is shook, I will give you a wisdom save to see if you can actually get the mental fortitude to go, what the fuck just happened? Oh, crap! But before the hand is shook, but essentially the cord has been struck but hasn't been sealed yet, go ahead and give me a uh, a wisdom save. I'm being nice. <laughs> 13. 13. This, uh, this reminds me of... I, I had a circumstance in high school in which we were in chemistry class making some things on the side that we shouldn't have been making. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> So was when math? what <laughs> was it math? <laughs> I believe that process is a lot more complicated than high school chemistry. But uh, no, it was an explosive. In which case, the <laughs> the one partner who didn't know what was going on because you know chemistry you're always partnered off reached for a glass string rod to scrape the bottle of a the, the bottom of a beaker, and I started with I really don't think, and then. Boom! <laughs> so that's kind of where I feel like we're at. We're like, Julie's like, I, I don't think. Oh, you already shook hands. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Basically, that's what happened. Before Julie went, hey, wait. A oh, son of a bitch. All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> or excuse me, the Narn version. Oh, by Jaquan. Because there needs to be more cursing in various races, as far as I'm concerned. Yes. Uh, come to find out like the Mimbari, you know, general curse that most people use for either damn it or oh shit, you know, is this this unbelievably obscene phrase in every other culture. <laughs> I can believe anyway. that. Mimbari have had millennia to perfect their swearing game. <laughs> so it's kind of like what somebody once said, the, mo the worst thing you could ever call somebody in German is Schweinhund which translates as pig dog. And most other cultures are like, and? Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're Jewish, I can't see how and most other cultures would be upset with this. <laughs> but again, cultural context is important. So you make the deal with the, the association, and they're like, happy to do business. No, whatever we bargain will not affect, the, will not harm, nor negatively affect the Pakmara Collective in any way, shape, or form. Excellent. That was the bird. Okay, good. I, I yeah. don't. And they actually say that. I'm sorry. Julie, like, th when they're actually saying that, Julie 
mostly under her breath, will say, no one believes you. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you say, Becca, in Mirgrad's voice? Excellent. I shall call my associate. If they said, of course. Now, um, he motions for uh, Duli and Kulata. So, shall we begin our investigation? Though, uh, one of the others steps up and says, I believe there is a uh, stop that must be made on the way there. Oh, yes, of course. Thank you for the reminder, Jameson. I just pulled the name out of the hat. I don't know if it's the same guy. Whatever. I just, I needed a name. He says, yes. Any association has grunts. <laughs> Every association has a tier system. <laughs> you know, as, as, as all of a sudden we go, wait, is the, the association a, technically a pyramid scheme? I can't tell. <laughs> um... <laughs> It so, is, but it's just like this giant obsidian ziggurat that, like, <laughs> the shadows left behind. <laughs> and you could do more than 13 tiers because you don't have to deal with the population of one planet. You can deal with the population of hundreds. <laughs> uh, so they said, yes. So shall we to security? We will escort you there to make sure you're safe. And please, he motions the uh, Kaluta. You may come, come as well. I believe you are... The, the bodyguard, is that correct? Kaluta just says, I am Kaluta. I am mighty. Well, oh, of course you are. <laughs> Shall we? Uh, <laughs> uh, these guys are... Okay, these... This is this is not Mirrorant talking. This is Benini's podiatrist here. But, like, ugh, these guys are such marketing dipshits. Like, oh, <laughs> we're giving you something by letting Kaluta come. He was coming already, you assholes. Don't act like you're gi you're doing us a favor. That's the thing. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it's a good thing we didn't bring Padini's podiatrist on this. Yes, but it was but it was uh, Mirgrad who made the bargain with these people. Ha 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 ha. True. Listen, oh, good grief. I can only work with what with what I am, and you know when I'm in character, you know Mirgrad <laughs> has their priorities. That, like I said, that's one of the great things about working with both Catholic, Vampire, and, uh, or, you know, White Wolf-ish, and a couple other games that I've worked with. Sometimes the bargains are amazing, and what people will say yes to is incredible. So Mirgrat makes a call, and thankfully, yes, the Pokemon group, which still, that's right, most of them got moved to the diplomatic quarters for safety and security, uh, they did volunteer up five of their best researchers. Now, none of them were full librarians, but a couple of them were uh, researchers. Now, one, interestingly enough, was the Pachmara equivalent of a journalist. You know, basically trying to go out, look at stuff, and write it down. So not entirely researcher, but close enough for jazz. One of the Two of the others were scientists, uh, and one actually is registered with IPX. I mean, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So it was like, oh, we have these ancient artifacts. Artifacts, you say? <laughs> so again, they you're able to bring in a crew to take a look at some stuff. Now, in general terms, this is a project you, and, uh, that all of you could be working on for quite some time, but will, as needed, you you can be able to leave to engage in other stuff as Mirgrad in-game. But yes. as part of that caveat, at least two of uh, the association will be there to both acquire the knowledge as it's discovered but also to keep an eye on everybody else so everyone is you know on on par yeah that makes sense so there's still there, there is a level of what i would like to call corporate mistrust they will do deals with you they will make sure everything is right they will abide by their side but they want to make sure you abide by yours listen i've been a visiting researcher before i know the drill <laughs> And by I, I mean Mirgrat. I, yeah. I, like, me, Becca, has never been a visiting researcher, but, like, yeah, no, this is standard. Like, this seems like standard practice. Like, Mirgrat's just glad they're not, like, wanding them down at the end of the day. By the way, I'm guessing you saw that that meme out there. Somebody goes into uh, the the uh, store full of the evil cursed items. You may buy these, but be careful. Everything comes with a price. Yeah, I know. I, I understand how money works. But it comes with a price you may not understand. Yes, everything has taxes. I get that. <laughs> no, but it may be <laughs> misfortune upon you and your family for generations. I understand. We're in late-stage capitalism. Just give me the damn doll. 
So, so yes. Yeah, so. I have not seen that meme, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Fair enough. Julie, you and Kaluta are, uh, I guess the word is escorted or being escorted or whatever uh, through the, through the steerage. And again, no, so don't worry, Ty, we're bringing you back into the fold. Uh, it's fine. I swear to God, I don't, we spend more, more of this game split up. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I mean, like we have characters with, with, you know, sincerely different interests in certain respects. Mm-hmm. Very true. And you're all not like, you know, bonded at the hip or anything like that. Yeah. I mean, even though I'm technically like Dooley's, uh, not Dooley's, uh, Ty's parole officer or whatever, but, you know. <laughs> yes. That was great of the person. They decided Grin. to give Ty a commission, whatever they did, so. Yeah, well, so yeah. it's fine. Well, technically, Ty, you are a visiting officer from another vessel now, so there you go. Yeah. All right, you are escorted up. Uh, that's right, I wanted you to make a notice check real quick. 23. 23, okay. I think that'll be... Oops, sorry. Amazon. (laughs) Story of my life. (laughs) Happens. It's amazing, all these dogs in space, right? (laughs) If you actually watch the bloopers of Babylon 5, the number of times they've had to deal with the fact that you can every now and then hear a plane going overhead. Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) You know, you know... You know, one one time there's Captain Sheridan. He goes, you know, like, do you think they'll have the Centauri do this? No, that's not their prerogative. But that is their plane. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or if you want to see the amazing uh, Walter Koenig in that you know close up shot as he's a, you know being spooky telepath, doing you know making spooky monologue. He says, ah, for a number of years. Yeah. There have been planes in my head. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> like I said, still the best is Bill Mummy, who will do all sorts of stuff right before the camera says stop in a cut. You know, first day he shows up as Lanier. There's the Len. Now come Lanier. Tell me of home. I've been away for far too long. Beatlemania is back. Uh, <laughs> I saw that one. (laughs) Anyway, but yes, you made the roll and you basically, as you're passing by, you start hearing little whispers here and there of, oh, is the association working with security now? (gasps) They must have somebody in the security. (gasps) Oh, really? Oh my, what is going on now? Oh, this changes everything. Whisper, 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 whisper. Go ahead and if you want to make an intrigue check. Okay. I have to look up that one. Mm-hmm. It's not very often I use it, and it's not my best skill. Fucking same. <laughs> well, it's okay. Up until now, most of you guys have been using, you know, predominantly bluff and diplomacy and knowledge skills. So your best, you know, best chance out of these situations is not to listen or see, but to lie your ass off and make friends. I mean, that's like as in fiction as in real life. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ooh, 28. You're older 19 nice. to boot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, basically, you're understanding a little bit more what these whispers are about. People see you, not necessarily the head of security, but the head of the, quote, secret service uh, with special projects under security that you are walking with the association that must mean that the association has made a deal somehow or another with the quote unquote local government body that is the ship's crew they also okay, see so now i'm torn I'm, I'm torn between snapping and turning around and telling everybody to shut up i'm not working with those evil beings or to use this to my advantage uh-huh <laughs> oh you know what ty would advocate well, yes. I believe I, I, what I believe, Ty would do. I believe Ty's advocation <laughs> involves a finger. Uh, oh my god. There's a new bumper sticker. What would Ty do? <laughs> Decide it's none of her goddamn business. <laughs> or not worth her bother. Yep. 
I was like, yeah, Ty probably has the the Brakiri equivalent of not my circus, not my monkeys tattooed on her back somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that people can read it as she's walking away from their problems. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> bravo! 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 <laughs> that was good. But yeah, as you walk through, yeah, you have the questions of what's going on. Either do you use this for yourself? But does that mean if you use it, you're going to be tainted by these the association with the association? Uh, the other one, you also hear a bit of the ah, Kaluta is working with them. So there's little whispers of, is that how he won his fight? Is that the source of his power? Um, <laughs> yes. So, and Kaluta's just now like, I, I just look of my pissed. Power. That's how sports <laughs> rumors are started. <laughs> Although at least one girl, uh, or, yeah, a young, young female, does run up to Kaluta with a book and says, Sir? May of course. You know, <laughs> again, the pen looks like it doesn't even fit in his hand. The book might as well, you know, in her hands, it's a textbook. In his hands, it looks like a micro notebook you put in your back pocket. And of course, you know, he just writes, you know, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Always be strong. Ka Luta. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and of course, course, motherfucker. Sorry, what? <laughs> Some kind of John Cena motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he is a wrestler. He's a lucha. Literally, yeah. <laughs> and be surprised at this point. He doesn't do kind of the uh, uh, wrestler equivalent of the princess wave as he passes by. <laughs> uh, I believe you actually need a folding chair to execute that properly. <laughs> Well, he had to the John Cena, you can't see me bit, but you know, whatever, you know, Mark. I, I guess this would be the definitely the equivalent of, um, Kaluta would be the rock holding a frying pan over his shoulder as he walks around. Yeah, that just works. So, he, <laughs> you know, just, so you can smell what the rock is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and we have officially exhausted my entire sphere of knowledge of pro wrestling. <laughs> you mean we haven't quite gotten to your uh, macho man, Randy Savage? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he's just like waving. He's like, you know, he does the equivalent of yes. Hello. Hello. Yes. You know, signing for autographs to anybody who is dares to approach. And otherwise, this is the scariest thing. He is a titan of a man, or a Drazi, with the lucha mask, with the white outfit on, and is, you know, uh, if you want to give me a sense of motive, but I'll give it to you free. It looks like he loves his fans. He is honestly like, like a lot of people out there who are these massive, massive wrestlers or, or uh, athletic types. They're either giant assholes or like the nicest guy. Hmm. He's the latter. <laughs> I mean, we kind of already knew that about him. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. But, and they do, you know, eventually you get up to second class and get to first, and that's when uh, Jerry says, ah, I believe we have a stop before we get to security. If you would be so kind as to join me, no charge. Please this way. Where is he pointing to? Uh, he's pointing into first class. Again, it's hard to navigate a little bit, but he has, a, it's just over this way. Not far. Don't worry. It won't take long. Hmm. I I look at Kaluta and say, "Be be on your guard." I mean, they're asking for an additional favor, Julie. Uh, as Padini's podiatrist, I will say this does give you another bargaining point if you choose to use it. True. But what am I way, using it for? What am I asking for? I don't know, but they want you to do something. Are you going to give it to them for free? That's true. Um. By the way, when you I'm just stopping. On, on, go ahead. Go, uh, go ahead. I was gonna s s stop them and say, "Why are we going here?" Oh, he says. They said, one of our affiliates had an issue that we we're just dropping off a solution to. Uh, but like I said, just we'll take a moment and then we can continue on. Like I said, just a moment. Something I was doing along I, the way. If I don't you have a problem with this to go in there um first last time was in first class i i think 
I'm trying to remember exactly, but I think someone punched me. <laughs> yeah, they look for, ah, yes, I believe you were in the middle of a fight between a church and pod people faction who were very interested in you at the time. At least that's what the reports came out as. We've heard many things about the great brawl of the, of the mall, as they called it, when uh, <laughs> the great giant here, Kaluta, and the honorable knight, uh, Connor, came to your aid and helped you against those who would do you ill, uh, making your way towards uh, the docking bay. If legends are to be heard, it'd be believed. I like how this mm. happened like four days ago and it's already legends. Yeah, oh, things, <laughs> things travel fast, you know, especially in these countries. They got nothing else to do. It's been like a few weeks. We were gone for a while. Yes. Yeah. He says, um, if you wish to head up to the security and get the footage ready, I'll join you there momentarily. We are out of steerage, if you so desire. But I, just a quick moment uh, of your time will all be required. Otherwise, we'll meet, meet you there at security. Okay. By the way, when you said before the Kaluta be on your guard, you know what he said, right? Always. Always. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, you make your way up to security. Uh, as you walk up, Kluda goes, do not trust him. Good. No, no, he says, you do not trust him. Oh, no. Is that a question? No, it was a statement. Uh, no, and he I, just kind of leaves it at that. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Do you? Of course not. He speaks of words and is a warrior of words. Bargains for him are knives in the back. They cut, they do their job, but otherwise they are not going for the open palms and the open sources. They are going straight between the ribs, which is efficient, but dishonorable. I will take this under advisement, and I will see what I see about this verbal warrior. But in the meantime, I will guard, as I am supposed to, as you have saved me and saved my kind. I will also, at some point, check in with the Drazi contingent. I believe they need to see someone of known and of worth, and if what he has said is true, the last time we were on, uh, we were in first class has now become myth and legend, and I think we could use that to our advantage. Where is the Drazi contingent compared to where we are now? Many of the Drazi are in second class. There were a few in steerage. Many could not pay. Many paid very well. Drazi are efficient. We are not the greatest of merchants compared to, say, the Bercuri or to the Centauri. We are not the greatest warriors all the time compared to people like the Narn or even the Mimbari war uh, warrior caste. But we do well. We do very well. So they're not in any one specific place? No. We are, I won't say everywhere like the Pak Mora, but we are, have our people, have our places, have our traditions. I know where to find them. I mean, technically all the Pak Mora are in first class right now. True. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that is one of the legends, you know, when they were talking about the Pak Mora, they're everywhere. Why? Because people ignore them. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, except for that one time when you see a uh, Pac Mara coming out of the restroom and it shakes his entire body. Um, <laughs> no. um, but it's oh. just, yeah, very well. But I will guard you until we get there. And until then, you need not worry. So, you head you oh, do right. head over to... Oh, go ahead. No, no, we head over to the, the to the security, the security area. So this is where I have to make the transition to Ty. I knew I was gonna. I told you I was gonna get back to you. Mm -hmm. uh, so I didn't want you to feel left out. We only talked to you for like a few, you know, first like fifteen minutes of the game. I mean, um, I did refuse to go on this little adventure. So no worries. It's kind of my fault. That's fault. So um, at some point, 
while having tea, enjoying a nice relaxing time. And by the way, as far as you can tell, um, uh, Edland is hilarious. Ty doesn't dislike Edland. Mirgrad is the one who dislikes Edland. Ty just True. has no problem with him. But you haven't had a lot of time. Most of the time he's been seeming very genteel, a little standoffish. But the more he starts unwinding a little bit, the more hilarious you find out he really is. Uh, I mean, it's not like, you know, roll on the floor laughing. But again, he's the kind of guy you would love to have at a, any sort of gathering or, you know, go to a bar with and have a couple of drinks with because you don't know what's going to happen by the end of the night, but you'll either have a great story or a good time. And by the end of that, that's all, all that matters. Ty, that you, now that you're back, you, again, have a lovely conversation with Yorni and with Edlin. Edlin is more than happy to talk and be, you know, a good host while everyone is enjoying his scones, which are, by the way, very nice. Is the, you know, again, the almond biscotti things. And once he teaches you about a particular uh, frosted beverage, not like frosted as in cold, but as in like, you know, extra milk on it, that sort of thing, uh, mm -hmm. a little sweet in it. Once he teaches the trick with that, oh my God, it's, it's like a revelation. It's like when the old Italian woman teaches you how to truly enjoy a cappuccino and the biscotti. Uh, <laughs> and then it's like, ah, this is amazing. I assume that's great for people who like coffee. Yeah. However, at some point, oddly enough, you hear a chime, an actual door chime. Mm -hmm. and sorry, the cat's here. Goes, sorry, what? I was talking to the cat, sorry. Oh. <laughs> it just turned out we just are just having major animal problems. Today. Yeah, for real. It's, <laughs> it's, all, it's, it's ongoing. I am all... happy to report that my house plants have not interrupted me once. That's okay. We had the whole ant session for you. So. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. That's true. I will shut the hell we up. We have not forgotten about the ants. <laughs> I, on the other hand, am probably going to look into a dog at some point. We'll see. We'll see. That's um, not a bad thing. No, yeah, no. Dogs are great. I love dogs. I love dogs too. I just haven't been in, haven't had one in in twenty five years. So there you go. Anyway, uh, but anyway, so the chime happens, and you're like, "What's up?" And then Edlin kind of gets a weird look on his face. Very, I won't say scared or cold, but just like all of a sudden he drops into seriousness, and he says, "Just a moment, please." He gets up and says the magic word, which in here is easy enough to say, indistinguishable. The door opens and there is, bless you, dog. Uh, <laughs> there is a man and the woman who you recognize. It's Jerry and Melinda. And he actually looks over, he bows slightly to them and, he says, and they bow slightly back. And he says, so what can I do for you? people today. Ah, I believe we have some information for you in regarding to the discussion earlier. And I believe our associates would like you to be, like you to have this particular knowledge in this situation. I believe this fulfills a number of accords and, and, and helps us in various situations. Uh, this time it's not Melinda, uh, not uh, Jerry who has the briefcase, though he does have a briefcase. It's Melinda who pulls out a briefcase and you know from where out, oh i'm not gonna say like you know you know from behind the back <laughs> or anything else like that it's it's <laughs> she reaches behind edlin's ear <laughs> <laughs> is this your briefcase um <laughs> she has a briefcase with her she you know opens it up takes out a couple of uh i won't say a full size you know tome or anything else like that but again it looks more like a couple of motherboards with chipsets attached to small little screen sets with a number of outports on the other side made of crystal. And she kind of pulls it out and says, I believe this will be helpful to you. And he says, I thank you. And I thank your associates in this regard. If you'd like to come in, no, no, we have business, please. We will uh, enter another time. Though they look over at both uh, Yorni and Ty, and they say, Yorni, you are uh, satisfied? Yes, good sirs, I am satisfied. Excellent. And Ty, I believe you're satisfied in the situation. I believe uh, there is somebody looking for you in the security booth. Would you care to join us? Who is it? This is, uh, oh, are you asking them who is it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, we are going off to uh, discuss finding Wagner. 
with Kaluta and Ty. They are waiting for us. To me. Over- it's right. Thank you. <laughs> Brain! About that dementia thing. We're going on to discuss this with Kaluta and Julie. Would you care to join us? I believe that you might find their insights useful at this time. And I believe you've had some experience with this person named Wagner. Oh, yes. I know him. Might as well. I think I'm done here. Just bump into an intern. (laughs) Yorni says, "I, I will be up to see you soon. I'm going to do a little bit more study and then join you. But please, contact me whenever you need me. I will come a running. Uh, even Edlin says, we'll both come running. But if you need her for any reason, feel free. <laughs> He's offering this to, by the way, to Ty, not to the other two. So, um, volunteer someone sure. else to Edlin. That could happen. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, Edlin, see you next time. I will go over the documentation you gave me. Hopefully this can work. And uh, he looks over at the others. And I will go over the sacred text. Thank you for this. I have a number of demons who might be able to translate this exactly. They said, excellent. Until then. Please, right this way. So, Ty, give me a will save. Okay. Let's see what that is. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, ah, yeah. All right. Okay. I'll let this one pass, but you know who exactly who these people are, right? Of course. Yep. So the shadow people have invited you to join them as they make a casual walk up to the security office to join them, to join our your other compatriots who they said they're still dealing business with. Just say Listen, um, <laughs> first of all, I'm pretty sure we already had this meeting earlier discussing that they were on our side or something, so Ty is not shocked by this. And second of all, Ty's been doing some weird shit anyway. Okay, fair enough. (laughs) So. (laughs) Dealing with shadow people at this point. Hmm, She doesn't love it, but you know. (laughs) She isn't gonna freak out about it or anything. Yep. By the way, I just realized in my head, this is a weird canon in my head, went, oh wait, if we were actually developing this as a TV series, that means the person who plays your character, who plays Ty as a Brakiri, uh, when Ty becomes human, is going to be played by the same person in a different colored wig. Mm-hmm. Basically. <laughs> oh, like I would up. thought it would be one of those, this is, you know, why, how we're explaining this person needs to leave the show. And so, you know, that is also other, bringing a new actor. Just yeah, that's the other, yeah. That's the only way to do this, too. But again, it's it's to get the, the right tones of voices. But yeah, mm. um, honestly, it would go either way. But it was just something in my head went, oh, wait, that would be possible when that happens. Huh, funny. So they, you know, they talk a little bit amongst themselves as they go up. Again, I uh, eavesdrop like a motherfucker. Give me a notice check. Actually, this would be intrigue. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh! Rolled a 10. What is with the dice today? <laughs> but you rolled a 1, but you got a 10. So again, you have a really good score, but yeah, the biggest trick in this case is that you do ace drop, but as I mentioned before, without a lot of context of what they're talking about, it sounds like they're speaking gibberish to each other. Yeah. Oh, um, wow. It's worth a try. I will give you. I will give you a sense motive check to see if you can infer what they're talking about. Okay. I'm being nice. Um. Let's see. Yep. Okay. Okay. Nineteen. Not bad. Um. I just. I threw some cards out to figure out what I'm leading up to for the cliffhanger. Uh, but basically, you can tell that they're talking business. I mean, that's obvious. Again, everything they say is obviously some sort of business here and there, a couple of deals here and there. Um, there was a couple of words that you think you understood, but you're not sure about the associate, the associates that they're working with. And there was one word that, because it's come up so often, has started to bug you, that when it came up, you don't know the context, you don't know what they're talking about, but you heard that word, and your word now, you know, that every time you hear it, it peaks up. The word mm-hmm. is 
home. Mm -hmm. Again, with everything else between what's been going on with the other creatures. And um, give me a knowledge check, just a straight knowledge roll. Uh, even after the team. Oh! Way over. Ah. Uh, okay. Grief. Uh, I have to. Th I have to throw a card. By the way, I threw three cards before. This is honestly. I think this works. Mm -hmm. um, I like how Ty manages to get in more trouble just listening to these motherfuckers talk than Mirrorette <laughs> did, like making a devil's bargain with them. People should not have conversations. Round tie, maybe in general. So, the biggest issue is that when you're listening to this, you think you hear the word home a couple of times based on what you know from the Yithians, based on what you've heard about from the Eldari and even the uh, Kulati. And there is this thing people have been talking about for years never go close to Zaha Doom because you never return. And then Zaha Doom blew up after mm -hmm. the shadows left. I mean, that's one way to make sure you never return. Common yeah. Knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is pretty common knowledge, because if nothing else, the shockwave of a planet blowing up throws off space lanes. Right. And as a person who survived the Shadow War, words get passed along pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So now here is an inference that you think is true. Are they looking for a new home? a new Zaha Doom. Mm. It only makes sense if their shit got blown up. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the shadows are gone and everybody knows that. But their servants are still here. Yeah. Otherwise, where would these people be from? But their servants and are just some fucking goons. And they're all like, there's plenty of goons in the galaxy. They're not that crazy. Assuming... And the question is... Yeah, how much power do they actually have? Like, without their super secret overlords, like, are they that much scarier than, like, any of the Rakiri syndicates? Because... <laughs> Let's put it this way. They have technology which was able to change um, Wagner from a Bikari female to a human male and was able to almost change your human son into a Bricari son, but it but didn't quite take, so they went halfway. True. Uh, also, Bitters. what it they imbued uh, Yorni with Technomage devicery. I mean, but Technomages can do that too. <laughs> can they? Oh my god, they're like the Borg. They've just stolen technology from everyone. By the way, the three cards that I threw out, you'll love this. The first one was called, Where Did That Come From? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, second was, the second was called, Fleeting Glimpse. And the last was called, Way With Words. I think I've, ab I've abided by all three of those cards at this time. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, yep I'll decide later whether Ty's going to tell anybody about this or just decide to uh, not mention it. So it doesn't derail what she thinks is a reasonably good plan. Okay. Not my circuit. Someone will freak <laughs> out. Mm-hmm. But just just remember, based on what you overheard, they're looking for a new home. Wonder mm. where that might be. Hmm. Oh, and don't you own a or or, or control of a not only just a bio vessel, but this huge ship? That was once a variation of Babylon 4 with Vorlon technology in it? Mm, yeah, it's full true. of bear cultists, so good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, also true. <laughs> and we have another bumper sticker. Um, <laughs> so that's little things in the back of your head to keep in mind as you mm. walk along. When you get to the uh, security station. Now, Julie, I'll need a computer use from you, please. Twelve. Okay, so not yeah, great, but you start a system running to try to find uh, any of the cameras that are still active to get facial recognition of uh, Wagner based on what you remember. You've never seen Wagner's new face, but you remember when Ty 
re-met Wagner and there uh, was a camera pointed towards the church. So you kind of got a general idea of what he looks like. And so you're setting up the parameters to generally try to find him. Now, again, based on his height, his dress, beard, you know, human, certain type of skin color, certain type of hair color, you know, that sort of thing. Wears glasses. And, uh, hold on a second. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I threw out, threw out a couple other cards to figure out what he'd been doing. And so far, you haven't come up with anything yet. You're just letting the system run, hopefully, to get a hit. It may take days. It may take minutes. Who knows? But you're still waiting for everything to run through. In walks in while you and Kaluta are doing this. By the way, Kaluta actually does ask to leave so he can, you know, again, see if he can get the draw, the local Drazi on his side. There is a ritual coming up soon. So essentially, he's going to church to address the pulpit. Okay. Just not the, not the church, but a Drazi uh, religious service to use the pulpit as a way to address the rest of the Drazi contingency. Reasonable. So... But that also means that you know, there's a couple of people in here. Again, mostly the security agents, some humans, some Mimbari, some uh, some Narn, some various other races. Since this is still technically an ISA, most of them are human though, because uh, it's easier to costume humans uh, when you're, you know, doing the budget. So less time in the makeup chair. Uh, but yeah, so you're running a few things, so you don't feel like you're here alone. Uh, the place also, again, had to be partially rebuilt. So some of the computers are non-functional. The front desk still has um, urn scrapings on it. Uh, <laughs> you know, because the last time you were here was a couple of weeks ago, and there wasn't a lot of stuff to repair with. So mostly they brought in the cleanup crew, you know, when the explosion went off. Um, right. So, but again, a couple of the, the monitors are still usable. A couple of the computers are still usable. Um, but the front desk area is completely trashed. Some of the cells aren't that great. But the weapons locker is fine. Which I guess is also something of a blessing. Because that means if the weapons locker is fine, that means not any Yahoo can go in and grab stuff. Right, yeah. Um, is there a way to change the password to the weapons locker? Not for you. If Kali or uh, John Miller were here, then yes, but you don't have authorization for that. You're not head of security. Can we? Okay. But it, it is secure, so I'm not I'm exactly. only a little worried. Can I? I can't open it, though, right? You don't, but again, uh, the captain or Kali could also, uh, one of the other security people who has direct authorization could as well. Like, is okay. George still alive? I forget. <laughs> I have to make notes of that. Um, but you there doing the research. When in comes in, here's Jerry, here's Melinda, and Ty, for some reason. Hello. Hi. And uh, this is, our, our business is concluded. We're here now. Let us see if we can find uh, Wagner. And would you I'm like to bring your associate up to speed? I, we figured it's not our place to say. That would be a first for you. Um, <laughs> I've started to search. That's that's all I can do at this point. You know, I've entered in the parameters of what I know. Okay. And I list off, you know, what I put in. Okay. Hi, give me an intrigue check. Eight. You. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. So I'll allow. Basically, you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, hold on a second. And you aren't exactly the best artist in the world, but you can kind of like, you know, with a stylist going, okay, adjust that. Nose is wider. Eyes here. Okay, there's that. Okay, yeah. Okay. That looks like him. Okay, that looks like him. Basically, you help speed up the process for the scan. Uh, Ty, is Ty? Give me a computer use check. Okay. Twenty. Right. Not bad. 
Nice. <laughs> so you're like the, okay, no, this, this, that wasn't what he was wearing. It was more kind of like that. Okay, that. And yeah, okay, that. And uh, yeah, that's close enough. And then you kind of feed the parameters back in the computer, and that speeds up the process. And so without you know further to do, Ogner has been found. And his last known location was in secondary class. Looks like he's got, uh, he took over a small shop that had closed down because most of the other inhabitants were gone. Um, <laughs> apparently it was also one of those places that was an underground uh, amber distributor. Oh, and wow. now you know why it's gone. <laughs> yep. They are now in a, in a ship. But apparently it looks like the shop has been closed, but he's hung. Oh, you know what? That'll do even better. The shop is right behind Madame, Madame Vidrasini's old shop. Oh, uh, of course it is. <laughs> awesome. So uh, great. That I'm sure that has absolutely nothing to do with each other. Just a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he has hung a massive pentacle out front gross but so yes he has to advertise mm -hmm. or whatever it is he's doing there either i guess this is worth finding out either Julie or ty or both of you are allowed to make an investigation check um yes, let's see mine's not amazing but okay mine is, is one of my better 22 ones. Okay, 22, not bad. Good roll. And 20. Okay. 20. Good grief. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, di the dice magic seems to be on Ty's side today, all things considered, but still, yeah. Mm. Um, Considering she has a plus four and I have a plus 13 and she has more than me, yes. <laughs> comes and goes, comes and goes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Said like a true gambler. So basically, between the two of you, since it's not that big a difference, you guys both passed the 20 mark, but neither one of you got past the 25 mark. Basically, you kind of did some quick investigation by looking through records. Uh, Ty immediately kind of goes, what are the financial records of that place? Boom! <laughs> it's going, okay, this and this. Not only did they set up some sort of shop there, which seemed to be some sort of divine shop, people have been going there to for advice, things like that. You can definitely tell by the pinnacle, he's probably doing exactly what Madame Vendrasini was doing, which is why he chose that place right next door to it. You know, I thought you said forward. tentacle. Oh, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> tentacle. <laughs> tentacle. Okay. Oh. <laughs> that makes more sense. Were you like a pair of truck nuts on this thing? I don't fucking uh, know what you're up to, man. You were just like, oh, there's a tentacle hanging outside. And I was like, all right, that's a little weird, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Pentagram, a pentagram, if you like. There you go. That's so, yeah, that's that's an easier word. <laughs> Come on. Uh, well played, everyone. Thank you. And that is staying in the podcast. Uh, anyway, so, <laughs> so All right. apparently, he has been giving you know advice and things like that people come in people come out and based on your investigations ooh, yes the people whomever goes in and goes out are people who have not been touched by either side of the current conflict based on every other part of your investigation neither of them have gone to the church neither of them have gone to the areas where the uh the pod people tend to congregate um there's been at least one actually probably more than one of people who have been uh contacted by either group but then went to his place and for whatever reason were never contacted again it could be coincidence it could be something in particular but whatever it is there it's something's happening there and again it could be coincidence could be nothing could be just oh he went there and told them screw these guys mm -hmm. but it's a little unusual us. Oh, yeah. All right. When you do find Wagner, again, uh, Melinda goes, oh, him. Oh, yes. He was a former Yithian. Is that correct? 
he had made a deal in, in the 1800s in London to get knowledge and had be, uh, made a bargain to go back to become a Yithian, worked in the library there, and now he's here now. He bargained for a new body. Yes, yes, I remember him. Nice gentleman. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So, I believe anyway. he... Uh, he also, they were, I believe he also came back with several others, including a young boy, a uh, human female, there's a yeah, human, I can't remember the other one, Crap. Uh, a, hu a human male who ended up in a drowsy body, if memory serves, and a human female when they all returned, according to what he mentioned. Uh, a Dr. Noreen Spears, I believe? Yes, you believe a lot of things. <laughs> Full of beliefs. It's a free country, or was so. Uh, uh, so not all of them. <laughs> so Wagner may know something about this, but also a Dr. Noreen Spears has also had experience with this. Who also may hold the key to understanding of how to transition into the correct uh, into the correct body. Is this not so? Yeah, and she might. I wonder why nobody bothered to ask her. Because <laughs> you were in a place where you didn't have cell reception. <laughs> <laughs> true. Very true. And they stare. They look over at at uh, at Ty and says, "Oh, and your name is again." Mm. All right. You don't worry about it. <laughs> I need a bluff check from you, please. Yeah. Dooley's expression is like a whole mixture of things. <laughs> I go off to 17. Do you really want me to roll? Yes, I do, because you can roll a 1. <laughs> 18. Uh, yeah. But you rolled a 2! <laughs> True. Oh my god. However, this is the one thing that is actually good at. By the way, have you ever watched the movie The Great Escape? Mm hmm. Of course. Do you remember the guy who was teaching everyone German? Um, vaguely. It's been a few years. Basically, there was a bit where uh, he was trying to teach everyone to fit it, fill, fit in as German while they make their escape away from the camp. So he'd mm -hmm. teach everyone German, and then he'd always end a lesson with, Ah, you speak German excellently. And the guy would say, Thank you. And he says, And now you're dead, because now they know that you're faking it. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> at the very end of the movie, he, he and a bunch of people are getting on a bus, and there's literally a Gestapo person up in front of the bus, checking papers, checking papers, checking papers, and they're asking a few questions. And then one of them comes up, the guy comes up, the, the actual educator comes up, and he says, and they ask him stuff in German, he responds in German, they give the papers, they ask him to the bus, and then he says, you speak you speak German fluently. Uh, uh, great. And the, the educator just turns and says, thank you very fuck. Uh, yeah, I remember that part now, yeah. It's been a few years. <laughs> that sort of situation almost happened here. Hmm. Uh... Mm. And, you know, and when you did that, you, you did do the bluff of the 19, thankfully, where just the, and your name is not important, <laughs> which is also a great way of saying, <laughs> you know, I can neither confirm or deny that X I mean, things happen. Nothing, and you I'm not know. suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> These are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> You know, when somebody actually says, I have at 100% absolutely, positively never had sex with a dog, you know absolutely certain that person had sex with a dog. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you did make a good bluff check where you said, you know, didn't botch it, so you didn't say everything, but again, your silence speaks volumes. Maybe not the exact volume, but volumes. Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, they look over and go, ah, so more people might have more keys to this. Shall we go find this Mr. Wagner and figure out what it is that he knows and what other people may know? If we yes? really must. <laughs> Ty is getting the, oh God, how did I get in this? <laughs> okay, I just threw three cards and I'll let you know what it is after the cliffhanger, but you're going to be, you're going to find this hilarious. Are we? So, yes, yes, you will. <laughs> So, right. Yes. Okay.
okay, I gotta do it this way. Right, okay. So, you guys go, you know, as a team, all, all four of you, go towards uh, the, the, the secondary class, go to the main shopping area. You know exactly where Madame Vidrasini's was because everyone could hear the jingling bells. And that's the thing, even when you pass it, you, you kind of feel the psychic echo of jingling bells as you pass by it like his, her spirit is still prouncing up and down the, the the walkways and those all those damn bells she used to wear um but you pass her place which has been closed sealed and uh apparently the sign sealed by centauri law has been posted on the front and the the lockdown mechanisms have been put onto the store itself so it's like, you know, might as well have iron iron gutters on, on everything. Nobody's getting in this thing. But next door is another place. All the windows, or whatever the equivalent there is, have been blacked out, like somebody had draped curtains on them. The door is still there. The You find out that the pentagram is not actually hung there. It's actually painted on. It just, again, was nice faux finishing. You, can't, you couldn't see it as hanging, it, you know, as painted. It looked like it was hanging. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you go up and... If you got, if neither of you tap the uh, uh, the request button, uh, Jerry just goes up and taps it, and you hear the tap of Ding. "Who seeks the wisdom of Wagner?" <laughs> and it says, "Mr. Wagner, I believe we had a court before. This is Jerry Ordway. I'm here with the association as well as several others who I believe know you. Uh, may we have several moments of your time?" And there is a bit of the, oh, my good sirs, it has not been prepared. I know it has not been prepared and we are ready to accept what is currently available, but there is more things to discuss and I'm calling in a part of our favor. And yeah, you guys can hear the phrase calling in a part of the favor so wow. much. It might as well be a hammer. Yeah. He says, please open the door. We seek the wisdom that is Wagner. Yes, yes, absolutely. Guy sounds kowtowed. Absolutely. Definitely not too real. <laughs> yeah. Door opens. It's very dark inside, but it's everything seems to be lit with electronic candles. Nothing looks like it's actually lit with real candles, but good facsimiles thereof. Not the cr crappy-ass electronic candles we have today. You know, but electronic candles of the future. But again, it's like everywhere. It's like <laughs> like a goth dream center. There's <laughs> candles everywhere. There's a, a main table in the middle and several chairs around. And Wagner is uh, you know, is standing sitting at the table at this very large ornate chair. Says, Please, come in. Uh, do you two enter with the sh with the association? Um, I'm gonna hang back in the doorway as long as humanly possible. And just watch. <laughs> okay. From the doorway with the door open. <laughs> Dooley, what about you? No, I'll step just in the room. I'm curious okay. as to where this is going. Okay. Just as an aside, I'm pretty sure the first thing a Technomage learns to do is to turn off an electronic candle by blowing on it. Yes. Well, this is assuming he's not using hol uh, holograms to have the illusion of candles in the first place. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that also counts. Like, if you're controlling <laughs> the illusion, you can, you know. Exactly. So, uh, Dooley, you enter. Uh, Jerry and Melinda also enter. He look over, and you're uh, Dooley, give me a quick notice check. Okay, let me look that up. Twenty-four. Finally, all right. A decent Turn. roll. Yay! Nice. nice. So you notice that not only does he have uh, what looks to be some sort of box, a black box on the table, as well as some cards, some candles, some other stuff that you might recognize as human religious paraphernalia from some sect of humanity who the hell cares it's humans but also you know paintings around the wall but everything seems to be kind of shaded out heavily and but what's uh, the the box on there seems to be covered 
with like a sheet and a few other things. And he says, please come in. And he looks over at Dooley and says, I believe you and I had an accord once and I tried to help. Please know that I will not hurt you. Come in, please. What can This can only be shared in the dark. Um, the what? What can be shared in the dark? He looks over the wisdom I believe they're seeking. Please, come in. The door will not mm. lock behind you. All right. So you come in, door closes, and everything seems very shaded. Again, he's got the candles, but the candles don't really go that far in vision or anything else like that. And so they say, so, Wagner, we do have two things. One, we're very curious as where you are in this project of ours. And two, because we know you are part of the Yithian group, we have many questions to ask you regarding that. I believe we're going to war. And you and your others may be the key. He says, I, I understand. I agree. And I will help in best I can. I can only thank you enough for what you have given me. Of course. And the other favor? He says, of course. He pulls the drape away from the box. The box shimmers with anti-light. That is the only way to describe it. But the other way to describe it is, you know that rippling, bubbling, spidering shimmer that every shadow vessel has? Mm -hmm. That's what this box is made of. Great. That's where we're going to end for this evening. Uh <laughs> okay. Lovely. <laughs> Another job well done by Ty, who did not agree to this plan, but nobody asked her. A job well done indeed, especially one with a, such a strange treasure as something you might find in that box. But what is in the box? You'll have to join us next time to find out on another episode of Odyssey, a Babylon 5 story. Now, get lost. I have 400 pages to write and read. This is ridiculous. It's not even like my scripts are this long. And that's where we're in for this week. I want to thank everyone for joining us and hope that you continue to join us every two weeks for another episode of Odyssey. If you have any questions, comments, constructive criticisms, or just want to say hi, then you can find us at temporalplaygrounds.com slash odyssey or email us at temporalplaygrounds at gmail.com or find us on Facebook, Odyssey, a Babylon 5 RPG podcast or Reddit r slash odyssey b5 babylon 5 was created by j michael straczynski and is owned by warner brothers domestic media the babylon 5 role-playing game was produced by mongoose publishing utilizing the ogl gaming license for d20 our audio engineer is gabriel belden our theme music titan striker was composed by evan king incidental music provided by tabletop audio at tabletopaudio.com all other music provided by creative commons license and is available of information on our website once again, I am Daniel, and I thank you for joining us on this grand adventure. Good night, and keep dreaming.